Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Akamai Developer YouTube channel. I'm Josh, one of your developer advocates, and today I'm excited to walk you through how to install and use Replibyte to assist with database development on Ubuntu server in the Akamai Connected Cloud. Now, database testing is a crucial part of the development process, and Replibyte helps you do it securely by anonymizing your production data for testing purposes. And don't forget, if you want to follow along, use the link in the description below to sign up for Akamai Connected Cloud and get $100 in free credits. And this is perfect for new customers as it covers valid services for the first 60 days after adding a valid payment method. So let's go on and dive right into Replibyte. I'm at replibyte.com and this is where their documentation is located and you can get all of the information you need about the application. And just to break it down for you, Replibyte allows you to transform your production data into seed data for non-production environments like development and testing, as well as things like customer demos. This ensures that sensitive real world details are obscured, enhancing security while keeping the essential characteristics of the original data set intact. Now check this out, Replibyte is lightweight and stateless, supporting databases like MySQL, MarionDB, PostgreSQL, as well as MongoDB. And it can store data locally or in the cloud, including inside a Linode object storage solution. Plus it supports various transformers to anonymize data, such as generating fake names, email addresses, phone numbers, and much more. However, it does have a couple of limitations, like not being able to copy the data stored content directly into a local database unless it's running inside a Docker container. But don't worry, we'll cover everything you need to know to get started. All right, so let me switch over to Akamai Cloud Manager. And as you can see, I have a Linode set up. This is a MySQL node, it's Ubuntu 24.04. I already have it set up with a MySQL database on it. And if you guys wanna know how to set one of these up very quickly, you can head over to the marketplace and you can search for MySQL and run through the install that way and it'll set everything up for you. But what I'll do is log into it via SSH. I already have a user account on there with pseudo privileges. All right, let's get Replibyte install. And like I stated earlier, we'll be working on Ubuntu 24.04 server for this demo. And the first thing you need to do is make sure your system is up to date before you begin. So all we have to do is type sudo apt updates, type in your sudo password, and this will go through and refresh those repositories and see if we have any updates. And we do have a few, so let's go down and run through it. And it looks like the following upgrades have been deferred due to phasing out. So I guess they're gonna phase out these packages, which is fine. All right, so we need one dependency installed in order to get Replibyte installed. And that is the JQ utility. It should be installed, but we'll run through it right fast so we can make sure it's on the system. So sudo apps install, and then the package name is JQ, press enter. And yeah, as you can see, JQ is already the newest version. It's already installed on the system. So we're good to go there. Now we need to download the Replibyte archive. And let me switch back over to our website. So I can show you guys where to get it from. But if you go right in here under get started, under installation, there are the installation instructions for Linux, also Mac OS, Windows, if you want it. And then also installing from source. This is the command we are going to copy. This will allow us to get the latest Replibyte archive for Linux. And so let me go down and copy that and switch back over to the terminal and go down and paste that in there right fast. And that way we could download our package for a Replibyte. So it only takes a couple of seconds. And then if we ls our home directory, you'll see the Replibyte package there. And so we need to extract this archive. And all you have to do is type tor and then zxf. And then we could just put store tor.gz and that will extract our archive in the location that we're in, which is our home directory. So we get ls again and you'll see the actual file there. Now that it's extracted, we have to make it executable. So all you have to do is type sudo chmod and then plus, 
and then the X and then Replibyte. Let's go down and press enter and that'll make it executable for us. And now we need to move it in a specific location. That way we can actually run the application. So I'll just type it out for you guys, but it's sudo and then the move command. And what we want to do is move that Replibyte executable file to our user local bin. And that's the reason why we have to type sudo because that location is owned by root. So let's go down and press enter. Boom. If we ls, you'll see that it's gone. You can remove that archive if you want to, but it's stored in that location now that we need. But now that it's installed, I want to show you guys a few things. So Replibyte and then dash capital V and press enter. That'll give us the version. And right now this is the latest version, which is 0 0.10.0. And then also if we type Replibyte by itself, this will bring up the help so you can get information. You can also type dash H if you're used to typing that out, but it'll break down how to actually use it. And then all your options and then subcommands. And I'll walk you guys through how to actually use it once we create our configuration file. Now let's go down and clear it because there's a couple more things we want to do. Now, typically the way I set this up on my systems, I create a directory within my home directory. So what we're going to do is type make dir, so mkdir, and then we're going to use dash p, lowercase p, and then we're going to create two directories. And this is one directory within another directory. And the first directory we're going to create is replibytes. And then within this directory, we want to create a data location. And let's go down and press enter. If we ls this directory or ls, you'll see that new directory. We can cd into that replibyte directory. And now let's go down and configure replibyte. And the way to do that is simply by typing whatever text editor you want to use. I'm going to just use nano. And then the format is YAML. I'll just type config.yaml, but you can name it whatever you want to. Just remember what it's called. So you can call it because when you run the Replibyte command, you have to call that configuration file. And this basically tells Replibyte how to anonymize the data. So let's go down and press enter. And I want to break it up into three different ports so you guys can get a better understanding of the configuration. So the first thing we want to start off with is our source. And our source is basically how Replibyte will connect to your server. So let's go down and paste this in there. And I'm going to paste everything in here, but I'll walk you guys through it right fast. But our source, and then this is our connection URL. And basically you have to put it in this format based on the way your database management system is set up. And then also your user account, password. This is our local host. And then we'll use port 3306. That's the one for MySQL. And then I have a database called TestDB. All right. So now the second area we want to work with is our transformers. And this is how we anonymize our data. So I'm going to copy it in there and then paste that in there as well. And you have to be careful with YAML, just so you guys know. When I was setting up for this video, I spent like two hours trying to figure out what the problem was with my configuration file. And it was a tab in there somewhere. So that's why I'm just copying everything out and pasting it in here. So you guys want to make sure you do the same thing. And let me break it out for you. So transformers, and this is where you break out what you want to change in the data that is actually coming out of it. And there is a test database on this server. This is the database name, testdb. You have to put it up here as well for the connection URL. And then you have to specify the table, which we only have one table in there, but you still have to specify it because you can transform multiple tables within this database. You just have to put it in the same format, but you specify the table and then you start breaking out the columns of the ones that you want to anonymize. You only put the columns that you want to change. Like for instance, within this test DB and this employees, there is a column for birth date and you have to specify that. And then what you want to specify is the transformer that you want to use. And there's multiple ones you can actually use. I'll switch back over to the website right fast so I can show you guys. But if we go down here to transformers, this breaks them all out for you. And I could have ran it on the system, but I'm not going to, I just wanted to show you this way. And this is the name of the transformer. So you have to put it in that same format. First name that will generate a first name string only. So it'll generate a name, replace it with another name and then email addresses. You can also replace email addresses. So that's super cool. And really essentially what this is. So when you put it in a testing environment, you won't see personal identifiable information. You only want to keep that stuff in production. So this will randomize it. It'll basically dump out the database data and randomize the data. And then you can push it to your testing environment. Now let's switch back over to our terminal. 
And let me show you guys the next part, but I'm not going to break down each one of these columns. I'm going to show you the actual database and the tables in a couple of seconds. I just want to walk through each step of this. So the third section that I want to break down is our data store. And it's actually a fourth section, but I'll show you guys what you could do with that fourth section. But this is your data store. So I'm going to put it in there. And the reason I created that data directory is for our data store. That's the location for it. That's where I want to do it. I'm going to go down and close this. We're going to come back into it and edit it because like I said, it's a fourth section. But before I run the Replibyte command, I want to show you guys the database right fast. So let's log into it right fast. So we got MySQL and then dash user. And then we want to log into our root account dash P press enter. And then let's type in our password for our server and log in. All right, so let's just do a simple select statement. Actually, let me list out the databases that we have because I created two databases. One is going to be our production database and the other one is going to be our testing database, quote unquote. So show databases, press enter. We have our test DB. That's where we're going to have our production environment data. And then we have a C database. And just to show you guys, there is nothing in that C database and we can describe the test DB right fast and press enter. Oh, and I forgot, I gotta probably type use test DB. And really that describe is for tables, I believe. Let's see, yeah, you gotta be the table. So test DB, and then we can look at the table, that's fine. And the table is employees and it has a thousand files in there or whatever that we're gonna be moving over. Let's go down and run a use of that seed database that we have over there. And let's show tables. And that's probably what I should have did over on the other one, on the other database. So show tables. As you can see, this is an empty database. There's nothing in there. And let's switch back over to the test B and let's run these show tables as well. And you'll see that's that one table that we have in there with the data that we want. And I can run a quick select and then store from our employees table. And let's limit it to about five and semicolon at the end. That way we can see the first couple of things. And I want you guys to remember this. So if you remember like these names, so Georgie for CeeLo, and then I'll run this again, cause it won't touch the production data. It'll only write out changes to the testing environment, so to speak. So let's go on and show you guys how to dump out the data. All right. So let me clean up a little bit. Let's clear. And you want to stay in this directory. That's what I recommend because that's where our configuration file is stored. That way it'll make the command a little bit shorter, but all we have to do is type sudo and then replibytes and then dash C for config. And then we want to specify our configuration file. So it's config.yaml. And what we want to do is dump the data and create a new export of all the data as well as transform it using our settings that we put in our configuration file. And let's press enter and you'll see it's, it's very quick because that database is small. It only has one table in it with it like a thousand records, which is really not a lot. So it only took a couple seconds to actually extract everything out and then transform it. Now, let me show you guys another option because you can run this multiple times and it will keep a track of it. There's a metadata file in there that will track the amount of dumps that you do on the system. So we could type a uh, dump list using that same configuration file and you'll see that dump with a custom random number, but it also tracks when it was created. And it also shows you a little bit more information if it's compressed, encrypted, all that good stuff knowing, but you do have that option. I recommend you guys read the documentation in order to get that, especially if you're sending it to a cloud environment or from a cloud environment, you might want to encrypt it. And then also the size, but that's very simple, man, right there. And, and you guys can't see the transforms yet until we actually import it into a new database. But let's go to and create another one right fast. And that way I can show you guys more than one up in there. And now let's go back into our configuration file because the next thing we want to do is add that fourth section that I was talking about. And that's essentially the destination. So you basically put the source and the destination within the same configuration file. I just wanted to separate it out so you guys can understand how important each section is and break it all out for you. But nano config, and then let's go down to the bottom and I'll paste the destination in there. And like I stated, I have a database on this specific server called seed. And so that will be our destination. So I want you to simulate this being a remote server or a cloud server. You will have to put the IP address in here, whatever ports that are open for it, the account, password, and all that stuff essentially just like that. 
and it will grab whichever dump that you specify and upload it to that destination. So let's go down and save exit now here is the restore portion so let's type sudo and then replibytes and then dash c for our config.yaml and then we have to type dump again even though i'm doing this locally the local won't work unless you're running mysql in a docker container so we have to use remote even though it's local you can just run it just like this and it'll work and then Lastly, we need to put our value in there, which is the actual data dump that we want to get. And you can put the full dump name if you want to, or it's easy to just use the latest. So you can type latest and that will grab the latest one, which is this one that says three seconds. And so just go down and press enter and it'll take a little time. And you might see these warnings here, like MySQL warnings. It says using a password on a command line. That's why you, it's ways to encrypt the password or use variables from a lockdown file or whatever. So people can't access the passwords and all that stuff. That's something you definitely want to do, but Replibyte has examples of configurations on their website. Just run through them and you'll find what you're looking for depending on your use case. Now, the restore was successful. And so let's go on and log back into our MySQL server, MySQL, and then dash Y, and then our root account, and then dash P. And it looks like I keep making the mistake of not putting sudo in front of it. And so let's go down and press enter, type in our password for our account. Boom, we're good to go. And so let's just run our selects without switching over to each database. We could just run select, store, from, and then I know the name of the database is test, db, and then dot employee. And then let's do that limit again. That way we can uh, see both of the results in one location. So limit to five, semicolon, press enter. Cool. So that is the original data. As you can see, it hasn't been touched. All we did was dump the data out. Now let's check out the employees table that's in our seed directory or our testing environment, so to speak. And so that database name is seed and it has created this table in a database with the same format and everything. But when we press enter, you'll see that certain things have been randomized. So like for instance, PII information, birth date, you don't want people's birth dates put out there, personal identifiable information. So I just went through and it shows you what I did within the configuration file. I had it change the name. So as you can see, Georgie is gone and it put Cullen in there, which is super cool. And then last name, I just made it randomize the last name just to show you an example of it randomizing the, the data the, or the text that's there. And it even puts numbers in here and all that stuff. It left the gender. And then our hire date, I didn't want that PII out there as well. But that transform happens when we dump it out. So that data is changed when it's dumped out into that export. And that's it. You successfully installed and used Replibyte to anonymize your production data for testing on a Ubuntu server in Akamai Connected Cloud. Remember, securing your data is crucial and Replibyte makes it easy to create realistic test data sets without compromising your sensitive information. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more tutorials. And once again, use the link in the description below to sign up for Akamai Connected Cloud and get $100 in free credits. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.